Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing very well. Don't worry, this is an Akai Force tutorial. We're just doing the first bit in Ableton Live so that we can look at some waveforms and then we're going to move over to the Force. Um, so I think getting the low end right is one of the most difficult things about creating a mix. You want your kick drum uh, to sound powerful and you want your bass to sound powerful, but you want them to sound clean and distinct from each other as well. And when you look at forums um, for advice on this subject, people invariably go straight to solutions like adding uh, distortion or saturation or, or compression. When EQ is probably the first place you, you should start, um, and in particular using a high pass filter um, on your kicks, which sounds a bit counterintuitive because we think of the low end and bass, we expect to be using um, a low pass filter. So what I'm going to do now is show you a, uh, a, a way of using a high pass filter to clean up your kick drums so that they sit much more nicely with your bass and then we'll um, demonstrate it in action on the force. So what I've got here is just a, um, a kick drum four on the floor pattern and what we're looking at here um, where the cursor is is the waveform. Now this hump we can see here, which is at about 70 hertz or something, now it tells us it's 50 hertz, 51 hertz. This is the fundamental of our kick drum. This is where the impact and the power is coming from. Um, but below that, towards the, the, to the bottom end of the spectrum, there's still a lot of information here. Now this is where our sub bass and our very low um, frequency bass frequencies are sitting. And we can see that our kick drum is taking up quite a lot of space there, but we don't want it to. What we want is this powerful kind of impact here. That's what gives it the punch. So if we look at this module at the bottom, it says auto filter. This is Ableton Live's audio filter. And at the moment it's switched off. It's set to high pass filter mode with the frequency wound as far to the bottom as it will go. That means it's not cutting anything out. So when we switch it on, we're not gonna hear a difference. So we can see here the filter's engaged, but there's no change to our audio signal. So what we're gonna do now is wind the cutoff frequency back so it starts to take out some of the low end. So have a listen, listen carefully to what's going on, but also watch this area as well. Now you can see as we wind up towards about 60 hertz we're on now, we've still got our um, impact point here, but we've lost a load of this low, ed low frequency information that we didn't want. Um, so it sounded cleaner already, but we've obviously lost a little bit of impact. So what we're gonna do is use resonance. And for those of you that don't know what resonance is, let's just stop that. If we look at the filter here, the resonance control adds some um, gain to the frequency cutoff point. So when you're um, adjusting the, frequent, uh, the resonance on your synth, for example, this is what it's doing. It's adding some energy or some information at the cutoff frequency point. I've just twitched there. So let's dial it back to where it was and start our clip again. So what we're looking for is a point where we've still got some impact, but we've lost some low, some of the low frequency energy. And now we're just gonna add some resonance. And we can hear that some of our impact has come back. Now what you just need to do is by ear, balance these two controls until we get power and punch but no low frequency energy here. So that's A, B with and without the, free, without the filter. So listen carefully. We have our punch here, but all of this low frequency junk information that we don't need with the filter on. We've still got the punch and the power. Let's just adjust that. Yeah, that sounds good but we've lost all of this low frequency here. So you can see straight away that if we had some bass, a bass synth or a sub synth playing, it's now got a lot more room to breathe and the kick drum is still going to cut through. So the, the, the key thing here is not to get too 
kind of fixated on the waveform is to use your ears and just balance these two controls, the cutoff and the resonance, until you get the power without the bleed into the bottom end. That sounds pretty good to me. Now obviously you're thinking, or you might think to yourself, that's all well and good. How do we do that on the force when we can't see the way see the waveforms? There's no spectrum analyzer on the force. So what we're going to do is move over to the force now, and I'm going to show you how to do that there. Okay, we're back on the force. I have exactly the same kick drum sample loaded in, um, playing the same pattern. Sounds exactly the same. So to replicate what we just did on Ableton Live, we need to go to the mixer then the effects uh, page, and in our first empty slot, we're going to add um, our filter. We scroll down and go to air filter, which we now tap on to make changes to. Now by default, um, force gives us a low pass filter, which we don't want. We're gonna scroll down, and I have found, just by experience, that the uh, high pass filter two works best for this. The slope on it, it, it works nicely for kick drums. So we hit that. Now, um, it, on Ableton Live, we did it by looking at it. We could see the waveform. Um, we can't do that here, so we're going to have to find that sweet spot purely by ear. On Ableton Live, the last thing we did was add the resonance to bring that kind of punch back. But this time, we're going to use the resonance to find the point that we want. So we're going to add some resonance. Sorry, resonance? Resonance. Getting my false teeth in. Um, so let's go to 2.5 dB of resonance. So we've added 2.5 uh, dB at the cutoff uh, frequency. We're now going to wind the frequency back until we find that nice sweet spot. Because um, the frequency is all the way up and this is a high pass filter, we won't hear the kick drum at first. We're going to have to wind it back and do this by ear. So if we launch it now, we can't hear anything. But if we wind this frequency back, we'll start to bring the kick drum back in. You can hear it now. There we go. So we're at 61.958. Now, if we think back, we, this isn't this isn't kind of cheating, I suppose. But if we think back to what we did at Ableton Live on Ableton Live, we actually were at 61 hertz. So we know we're in roughly the right place just by comparison. But when we actually listen to this. We can add some more resonance and just fine tune this. So at that point here, 65 hertz and 3 dB of resonance, we've got a nice powerful kick drum, but because this is a high pass filter, we know this is not putting any information below 65 hertz into the mix, which is where our sub bass and our um, bass guitars or bass synths, all of that stuff will sit. So your mix is going to be a lot cleaner because of this. And because we've done this, we've fixed this frequency. This is the point where we can now start to add things like compression and distortion. For example, I always stick a little bit of distortion on a kick drum. So if we go to harmonic and distortion, this is going to sound rubbish. So we don't want that. We're going to go down to soft clipping and dial the mix back a bit. If we just play with this and our higher cut and our edge and all these different controls here, we can start to bring in some nice harmonics, which again will help the kick drum kick through, uh, cut through our mix. So that's basically how to use the high pass filter to tighten up and clean up your um, kick drum. Obviously, in combination with this method, you can use Mother Ducker to make the kick drum cut through the bass even further. Loads of different things you can do, but uh, but sorting the EQ out um, to get your kick drum sounding nice and powerful and clean is definitely the right first step. I hope you found that very useful. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.